Good day, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the RWA and Tokenization podcast. I'm Brad, your host, with Joshua Kagan from Bonfire. And today we have a really cool, really cool show. We're going to be talking about their platform and what it means for people who want to get into fractional real estate investments. So this is going to be a, a way that if you're new or you want a faster, easier way to build a real estate portfolio, the same as any other professional, without all of the DD and all of the front leg work, this is for you. So we'll just get right into it. And Joshua is going to walk us through his background. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your audience. And then introduce Bonfire and what you got going on. And then we'll start talking about your investments and what it means and who it's for. And basically be able to show your story here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Brad, for having me. It's an honor to be here and uh, excited to share with folks kind of what we're seeing in the market. Um, and for context, I'm Joshua Kagan, co-founder, CEO of Bonfire. Um, I'll go into why I started Bonfire and kind of what it is in a second. My background is I spent the last 13 years working in prop tech in real estate. Um, I li was living in the San Francisco Bay Area, worked at a venture capital firm, was focused on Internet of Things and buildings. And then Richard Branson and Al Gore had dinner and Branson got really freaked out about climate change and wanted to do something entrepreneurial about it and created this company called The Carbon War Room and asked my boss, who was the managing partner of the fund, to come over and be the COO of it. He asked me to come over and run the energy efficiency and buildings division. And we were focused on investing in multifamily office, hotel efficiency and renewable energy projects. Did that for four and a half years. We ended up getting acquired and I went to a startup called Clean Fund. Clean Fund is like a, like a private bank for, for real estate projects um, using a structure called PACE, Property Assessed Clean Energy. Um, I was our first external hire. Um, we grew from about 1.8 million to 94 million in the four years I was there. And then I left to start Bonfire. Um, I should say that, you know, in 2011, I bought my first foreclosure. It was in the San Francisco, sorry, the Berkeley Hills of the San Francisco Bay Area. And it was extraordinarily lucky timing, right? And I didn't have the down payment to do it, but my stepdad graciously lent it to me. And I, I got a mortgage and, you know, rolled up my sleeves and fixed the, the, the kitchen and the bathroom and had subcontractors and rented it out and did a refinance on it. And then I ended up buying another one. Um, and then I started doing flips. Um, and then I started doing this thing called the Burr method of buy, rehab, renovate, refinance, and built out a portfolio of single family rentals. And, you know, for most people who um, the biggest source of wealth they'll ever have in their life is the home that they own. And this has been the American dream for generation after generation, right? You go to college, you work hard, you know, you get married, have 2.1 kids and you buy a house and that house will go up in value, I don't know, seven to 10% a year and you put 20% down. And, oh, you know, when you lever uh, equity over a period of time and you compound that growth, it becomes worth a lot of money. Well, unfortunately, this Mer American dream has become an American myth because of student debt, because of, you know, lack of supply with private equity, buying up a lot of the housing supply because of interest rates doubling in the last year. And we created Bonfire because of conversations I had with my friends who are in their 30s and 40s. And they're like, I want to own real estate and I can't, right? For all the reasons I just mentioned earlier. And we, my co-founder who came from India 10 years ago, he started and sold three companies and, and real estate's been a really important part of his journey that paid for him to go to college, his parents, the, the properties they owned. And, you know, he's taken his money from, from selling his companies and put it into real estate as well. You know, we, we looked at kind of every platform that existed and we wanted to create a very easy way for people to invest um, instead of needing $100,000 to invest in a project to have a much lower minimum, but to be able to actually own real real estate. And it's the combination of blockchain and this emerging technology that we would never been able to do this idea without it. Um, with these conversations with our friends and, and just kind of hearing people wanting to get on this real estate ownership ladder and not being able to, that was the impetus behind starting Bonfire. Excellent. And I think that uh, you have one of the most compelling narratives that there is in the, in the real estate side because, you know, real estate is one, the toughest asset, asset class to tokenize. Two, it's the most stable, especially American real estate is the most stable asset class. And being able to take advantage of this for you know any investor, foreign, retail, accredited investors 
is definitely, you know, on everyone's future radar, right? So everyone's investment portfolio has a chunk of real estate. Within that chunk of real estate, you've got different types of, of, uh, of assets in there. Now, can you just walk us through like your platform and, um, you know, how someone can replicate professional real estate portfolio within, within your platform, being a member, uh, how easy that is. And then also, can you just talk to us about like how the deals get there? So we know that, you know, in your narrative, you're saying that you guys invest in these deals. So that's super important that you're following a very experienced and successful real estate investment company and taking advantage of all of their success and being able to say, Hey, I'm going to benefit from this too. I get to participate. And it's a, uh, it's a lot simpler of a journey for most people. So can you just walk us through your, your, your deals and, um, and what that means for, for your investors? Absolutely. So I should clarify that Bonfire, we are a platform that facilitates direct investment into specific real estate deals. So think of us almost like a wine club of real estate where we're targeting doing one high quality deal a month. Now, we won't put a deal on our platform that we don't believe in and that we're not investing in, right? So it's um, for us, we're not trying to be, you know, a comp some of our competitor platforms will put any deal that they come across onto their platform. Um, and it's for them, a, a, you know, kind of a huge numbers game. Um, we're much more focused on quality over quantity. Um, I should say that we're not putting funds on our platform. What is a fund? A fund is, um, you know, some sort of operator who has, a lot of capital and they're going out buying assets and pooling them together. Um, there's different structures of this. There's this thing called a REIT, R-E-I-T, um, which you can buy right now. If you want exposure to Simon Property Group, or sorry, you know, malls in the US, you can go you know, onto E-Trade or whatever, Robinhood, and you can buy Simon Property Group. Our biggest beef with managed funds um, and, and, and REITs, and I'll say REITs specifically, and then I'll come back to funds and then our specific deals are that a, you know, if you invest in Simon property group, a publicly traded company, you know, before you ever get a distribution, you're paying the operating expenses of the business, right? The CEO's salary, the, the private jet, the, you know, Madison Avenue fancy office, right? So in the case of Simon property group in the last five years, David Simon, the CEO has made roughly a hundred million dollars of salary. But if you had put in a thousand dollars in that stock, maybe it's, maybe it's worth $800 today, right? So, you know, if you want stock market exposure to stock market volatility, then REITs are really what you should invest in. But if you want direct access to real estate, REITs are not a good proxy for that. My issue with funds, and again, there's, we have competitors who offer, you know, investment to funds, is that the fund managers are, have high incentive to go do deals because their compensation is structured based upon their deal flow. Um, and their assets under management and things of that nature. So we are very different. We um, are only working with, excuse me, a handful of sponsors and we really vet um, our sponsors. You know, we do a lot of due diligence on them. So for instance, um, we just brought on a COO who, you know, has invested in $2 billion in his career. Um, he built a similar platform to Bonfire for, for non-listed uh, non -listed real estate securities like in the 90s. And, you know, our whole thing is like, let's find a handful of sponsors who have a 10 plus, you know, year track record, who understand a very specific investment thesis, like, oh, you know, we're in a supply constrained area that has a lot of universities and, you know, student housing is always in demand. And they, they have this a very unique, you know, thesis of the world and, and track record in a specific market. And they're finding assets that have some sort of reason why they're underpriced, right? So that's what Bonfire is, is like, you know, we're targeting eight to 12 deals a year that are very high quality, that have good potential for upside, you know, to, to, that there's a base case of about 15% internal rate of return, you know, per year. Um, that's the base case with, you know, significant upside, but also very limited downside, because, you know, it's one thing, you know, in life we pay, there's no such thing as, um, you know, a, a, a risk, no, no risk 20% a year return deal, right? I mean, in crypto, we see all kinds of, you know, we see people making 5, 10x, but we also see people losing 100% of their principal. 
real estate is is different. Um, if if you underwrite an asset correctly um, and it's cash flowing, you know you you can limit the downside. It's it's unlikely you're going to get zero, you know lose all your money um, unless you're investing in you know something that isn't um, regulatory compliant and and therefore the government could come in and shut it down or something. But that's that's kind of totally separate. In, in general, if you underwrite the asset correctly and the people behind it who have the track record of, of executing upon a business plan, you know, if you if you find those right partners with that track record, you can consistently do pretty well. And that's what Bonfire's laser focus on doing. Excellent. Excellent. And just as far as like, you know, touching base on your deals, can you just tell us like, you know, over the next say 12 months or whatever, you're going to add, you know, a dozen more deals. Um, what kind of stuff like the, the diversification of these and the opportunities coming our way? Can you just briefly describe those? Absolutely. So, you know, I don't want to um, look, the, the commercial real estate market is going through an upheaval right now. We have about a trillion and a half dollars of commercial real estate debt that's going to roll over, meaning you have people who bought um, and, and executed on projects at 3% debt levels that are now 7%, right? Who are maybe going to have to give the keys back to lenders and lenders are going to have to sell these assets. So we think that there's phenomenal opportunities coming akin to 2008 and nine. So I don't know if we're going to do five deals, 15 deals in the next year. We're, we're, we're in no, because we don't take commission from sponsors, we have no incentive to do a deal for the sake of it, right? So we can just be very, very judicious, you know, have our dry powder, have our community close to us. And when we see the right part pro project execute. So I'll give an example. Um, we recently did uh, invest in a hotel repositioning project in the Bay Area. Now you might say, oh, why would you buy, why would you invest in anything in the Bay Area? Well, this was in Marin County, you know, 20, 30 minutes from San Francisco, but a departure point to wine country. And we were able to, we were under contract to buy this asset at 44 million. Two other people had bid at 46 and 48 million, but our group had proof of, of funds. And then through discovery, we found an asbestos issue that the seller knew about and did not share. And we, you know, that, that's a material, um, it's something that you have to disclose and they didn't. And so we negotiated with them and got an additional $6 million taken off the price. So a really good deal became a great deal because of our diligence, negotiation, et cetera. So the project that we're releasing this week, um, it's a value add multifamily deal in, in Orange County, California. Um, you know, it's in a very supply constrained area that has wonderful schools. Um, it's very safe, but it's also, 15 minutes from Disneyland and all kinds of other job centers. Um, there's like the Irvine health system and this convention center and various other things there. And the average, you know, um, medium income in that area is $140,000 a year. And they're just not building enough. They haven't built enough of this particular supply in this area. So rents are really, really good. And the, the partner we're working with, they own an asset half a mile away um, that they bought 18 months ago for $500 a square foot. In these 18 months, they've been able to increase revenue by 30%. We're getting this one at $400 a square foot, right? With the same operator who knows the exact market, knows the exact clientele, what renovations people want in that, you know, like how to get the market, the, the rents up to, to market. And, you know, that's, that's the type of partner that we're looking for and, and, and the type of project that we're executing upon. Um, basically, again, like A plus sponsors who have knowledge of a local area who's able to get an asset under market. And the reason why we're able to get this at a lower price point is the seller has to sell because they're a fund and they have like a seven year cycle and they're reaching the end of the cycle. So they're liquidating. Right. And that's how we're able to, 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 to capitalize upon it. Um, that's an example of a project. I mean, we're looking at self-storage, industrial, other multifamily um, various student housing, afford uh, affordable housing, senior housing. We're not looking at office, you know, that, that feels a little bit too edgy for us. Um, but, you know, industrial storage, et cetera, um, in, in specific markets, um, you know, could make sense. 
Excellent. So following your work, we're going to be able to see a bunch of opportunities come to the table, different types of real estate, different types of reasons why you get into that side. And your model is basically direct. Uh, can you talk to us just really quick about how do I interact with your platform? Is this fiat on ramp? Is it crypto only? And, and how are the di distributions and, and rents or uh, payouts just, you know, delivered and stuff like that? How, how's that? work in the platform yeah we we accept fiat through uh wire or ach or we accept crypto um and i, I don't the list of cryptos that we accept are, are long and i don't i haven't memorized all of them um and you know i could share that with folks and what you do is you would just go to our platform um app.bonfire.capital we ask folks you know that there'll be a there'll be a, a marketplace like they'll show the deal of the month but to actually get through it and, and to get into the details of it we require someone to create an account, um, which is pretty quick. It takes, I know, about 30 seconds, um, name, email, um, you know, what country are they? And then, you know, they would look at the deal. They would kind of do their own diligence on it. We'll have a webinar with the sponsor. And then when it comes time to buy, um, if they haven't done Know Your Customer, we require someone to provide a government-issued ID and a selfie um, link their wallet, whether crypto wallet or their um, bank account um, through, through our platform and then just buy. Um, distributions all come through the platform, whether it's in crypto or um, in, 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 in fiat, whatever their preference is. Um, we issue K1s for them. Um, it's pretty seamless, the, the process. And you know, I'm happy to walk folks through a demo sometime if, if folks are interested. For sure. That'd be great to check that out in the back end. Now, as far as like the tokenization part, how does that play into like uh, what you just described as your as your entire process? And what is the token part and, and what what technologies are you using? Yeah. Um, so everything is based on ERC-20. Um, we use you know, Polygon's our partner. Um, and what tokenization provides us that other means haven't, there's a couple different things. One is a token represents a membership interest in an LLC that owns a portion of this asset, right? So we're on, we're on the developer sponsor operators cap table as, an, as, a, as a Wyoming based LLC that a tokenize is a membership interest in. Um, but historically, you know, these kind of real estate deals, the minimums are $100,000, $250,000, in some cases, 500,000. And tokenization enables us to bring that down significantly. The deal that we're announcing this week, um, the minimum token price is $2,500. Um, you know, we're hoping to bring, continue to bring that price down. Now, what tokenization also does, because these interests are recorded on blockchain, um, you know, we have aspirations to have a fully liquid marketplace. Now, I should caveat that anyone who's investing in tokenized real estate and they're on a platform that says that their tokens are freely tradable from day one, I would highly encourage you to do your own research and, and see whether that's really legal or not. Because if they are, um, if the, if the platform is compliant with the securities and exchange commission, the sec, um, and they're doing it through something called a reg D filing, it means that these, these tokens are locked up for a year. Okay. And if someone is saying that the tokens are tradable and they don't have something called an ATS license, you know, that's also a big red flag, right? So um, I would just encourage folks to do your homework and really kind of see whether the platforms you're looking to invest through, do they seem like they're trying to comply with laws or are they trying to make a very, what I would say spurious argument that because something is blockchain or crypto, that you know, US regulations don't apply to it. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of actors in the marketplace do that. And it really frustrates me. And I try to use back channels to communicate with these founders of these projects to say, look, you're not doing any of us a service by, by making these claims um, because the SEC and the IRS and others will come after you at some point, right? Um, but anyways, that's, um, so but tokenization, sorry, I didn't really, I, I got kind of went off on a tangent. Um, tokenization, and, and specifically, you know, blockchain is what will facilitate a secondary marketplace once an entity has all those, you know, regulatory licenses in place. 
Yeah, and you just hit on your tangent, hit on pretty much exactly why we're having this conversation, why I'm talking to so many CEOs. And I think that that's exactly what it is, is that what we're trying to do is basically show like, you know, who's building and who has their eye on that, that end game, right? And compliance and regulation has to be a part of it. And like you said, if they're not talking about compliance, they don't have a regulatory journey in mind, uh, it's probably best to be very cautious. And I know that um, you've seen it, I've seen it, and people out there have claims posted everywhere. It sounds like the dream, too good to be true. But if you were to try and uncover this, you might be getting yourself into something where if you sell your security tokens, you know, peer to peer or whatever this is going to be, now we're starting to get way into the gray and, uh, you know, people might not even be aware of that. So I'm really happy that you brought that up. I was going to be my next question to just talk about compliance, but you covered it. So going forward, you know, can you talk to us about like the overall experience here and, and what this really means? So I'm a crypto holder or I'm an investor. I'm interested in real estate. I know this is something I should be doing with my with my deployable capital. And I just don't know how yet. And give us a, a walkthrough on what that means for your your audience. You know, it's it's interesting. When I look at the people in my life who are wealthy, it's not the ones who drive a red Ferrari or who are posting on Instagram, all the expensive hotels they're staying at and all that stuff. No, it's the people I know who wake up and passive money is coming into their bank account and they don't have to work. Right. So what real estate provides is passive wealth and there's an active component to it, and that is figuring out who to invest with, who to trust, um, you know, the sponsors, the, the types of projects, et cetera. Like there is an upfront piece of work to evaluate the right deals. But if you if you find the right operators, you know, you make passive money. And to me, that is real wealth. So what I'd encourage people who are doing really well in crypto or have made, you know, and I've, I've owned crypto, I've been in crypto since early 2017, and I continue to really believe in it. Um, I've, I've, I've actually bought Ethereum and Bitcoin that I'm leaving my four-year-old daughter. Like it's in a, it's in a trust that I will never touch, right? Cause this is going to be here for a very, very long time. Um, it is the next wave, but I, I would just encourage people to diversify and, and diversify into things that aren't just quick wins like stocks, but also that can provide them with a combination of passive income and an upside. And historically the safest and surest way to do it is real estate. And um, hopefully Bonfire, you know, is, is a platform that enables people to be able to easily do that. Yeah, growing wealth and utilizing real estate. And now through tokenization, we are able to allow more participants to come in and join, join in on that benefit without having to be accredited or without having, you know, other requirements like the huge $100,000 entry level uh, starting starting investment. Well, Joshua, thank you so much for your time. We look forward to following your work. Uh, we'd like to have you back on our podcast in a month or two when something pops and, and talk about the exciting developments that's going on and continue to show your journey and how Bonfire is bringing tokenization to the real world and what that means for people that are looking for these types of wealth building activities. Thank you so much, Brad. This was so much fun. And uh, yeah, keep up the great work.